So we won't say you're just as bad. You are enabling his bad habits. Yeah. So you should stop. All right, today is the 17th. We, um, I've got the request for a nap day. Well, I, I don't really care. We just have to finish this lesson. Then I don't care what we do. So did I give you guys this homework yet? No. no. Is this just the very last? This is the very last lesson in the graded course of stuff. Let's get it done then. We get candy now, now, there is more for us to do. We can go deeper on some topics. We can explore some things. But yeah, this is essentially the So hold up. So question. When we prepare your master, you check Never. Uh, doesn't yeah. work. Doesn't yeah. work. Like doesn't yeah. work. This week. Like, the, yeah, this week was the plan. So you guys realize so this week is normal, quote unquote. Next week is math tests. I'd say we The following Wednesday. week is normal, quote unquote, but I think you guys actually do science testing that week. No, we yeah. this week. Yeah. Oh, so then the week after math testing is normal, or you guys are finishing up that yeah. math testing. It's normal. And then, we have then math that we really it's May term and travel in the last week of the year. We, we have it. not much time left. So, by as soon as possible, are, are people opposed to tomorrow? No, we guess do people Wednesday, are to tomorrow. Oh, we Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Can we do because Wednesday? we did have spring. Can we do a Kahoot yeah. tomorrow? So what I was thinking about tomorrow no, is doing a group to, yeah. like formative assessment of like whether it's you guys as one group or you guys as two or three groups or whatever, go through something for like a half an hour, try to do it on your own, something that will mimic what will be on the actual mastery, doing it as a group, whatever you guys decide as groups. Then Wednesday would be the mastery where you actually have to do it independently. Alright. I like that. That's fine with me. Wait, Megan? What are the formulas on the test? Uh, like what? Like the formula at the front of this? Like, like this sigma of. Yeah. Because a lot of this your calculator just does. You just have to know how to type it into your calculator, but most of these things uh, can just be done through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if there are formulas that you guys need, like I'll give them to you. A lot of, like on the state test too, the complicated formulas are given. Question. Are we doing the review tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow yeah. we'll do like a review thing. And then Wednesday will be our test? Yeah. And then on Thursday we should put more games. Actually, I lied. I might put your test on Thursday instead because I have to get a new roof put on my house. So I probably won't be here on Thursday because oh. we're yeah, ripping that's the entire roof off. Idea. But if it's going to thunderstorm on Thursday, then they won't be able to come and do the roof. So I got to figure that out. But your test will either be Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. All right, test Thursday. So, for science, yeah. okay, science, 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 science is okay. No. Let's dive in. So, we are told that this is a geometric series. We also know it's finite because we see the whole thing. So, we could just add it up. Or, if we weren't, is there another way that we would take? Yes. Dang it. Wait, is it? Oh, you used the thing. So, let's first look at what the ratio is. What is my ratio? Times negative two, right? Now, when we look at the formula from the front, because I want us to try to remember what the difference is here with what we're dealing with. Isn't it going to be like something squared and then this flips? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's so disrespectful. No, because it goes from negative to positive. It's either, ne it's either squared or cubed. I think it's squared, though. Well, what? 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 So you're saying positive finite or negative. So we have some of a finite geometric series, right? Okay. Here's our form. So if you flip to the front page, We gotta know what our ratio is. Uh, we need to know what our first term is, and the ratio to the power of. So that's where I think you were thinking of exponent sort of things. So this is gonna be our ratio <coughs> to the power of how many terms. So be careful. You were thinking square because the ratio was two. We don't use the power based on the ratio. We use the power based on how many terms. So I'm gonna snapshot this really quick just so it's up on the TV. I should not have cleared that, actually. So we know our ratio, as we already had written, is negative 2. And how many terms are there here? Any? Six. Six, right? So this is A sub 6. So set up our formula. The sum of our six <laughs> values 
will be the first. Now, obviously, this is an easy one trying to get you used to this. In the real world, they would be more complicated than this. 1 minus the ratio to the power of how many terms there are, then 1 minus the ratio. Hey, Nate, can you tell them to get to business? If they're reading, get them to read. If they're AO, get them to AO. Uh, an alumnus who's here doing like an exploratory teaching sort of thing. Because they, they realize that coming back here is a safe place to try stuff out. So they want to just dabble in teaching. I never thought about teaching from college. So if I could have in high school tried it out, it could have been beneficial. What did you want to do before teaching? I really had no idea. Like genuinely no idea. So the sum of my six terms comes out to be... 315. Wait, so will you give us this formula, the sum formula? Yeah, I... Like, yeah. Am I allowed to grab the... Grab sure, the yeah, yeah. You keep water in there? No, I don't know how that got in there. Thank you. I'm better at tossing than I am at throwing. Here's the interesting thing too. I just sometimes it's just interesting, sometimes it's useful. With my first two terms, I really net a gain of 15. Right, because negative 15 and a positive 30, I net a gain of 15. And I have a negative 16 and a positive 120, so I net gain 60. Then I net gain 240. Surely if I group these, and th this might just be interesting, it might be useful. I had 15, then 60, then 240. Why is this happening? I mean, if you are good with your number sense, you can see we're multiplying by... By 4, right? Because 15 to 60, 60 to 240, that's multiplication by 40, right? Or by 4. It's the absolute value of the first and third, like the evens? Or odds. Odds. What do you mean? Like, the negative 15 and 15. Oh, I see what you... So that's just not really coincidental, but that's not exactly what we want to... So, like, why this happens? You're, you're right, that is an interesting thing here, but that wouldn't necessarily have to happen. So think about a, a practical situation, right? If I give you two dollars, sweet, you gain two dollars. But then I say, okay, that we'll we'll play a game actually. I'll give you some money, no strings attached. But then, if you'd like me to give you more money, you need to give me back double what I gave you. Don't take it. But if you give me the money back, then I will give you back twice what you just gave me. And then if you want more money, you'd have to give me that money back. Wait, how are you giving him more money? So, so you have, you have to double every time, right? So I give you $2, you have to give me back 4 But if you give me back 4 I'll give you back 8 And if I give you back 8 you got to give me 16 But if you do, then I give you 32 That's our ratio of negative 2, right? Because it's alternating whether you're gaining or whether you're losing. So this is where the times 4 comes in. Well, then you, but Dave, then you have to come up with the yeah. other. That's how you, you like, yeah, you, no. And that just leads in like an endless cycle. Of yeah. Time. It wouldn't work locally. Yeah, yeah one person's going to lose money, but there would be a point where you could stop it and say, okay, I'm done, yeah. and I'm just keeping Like, So we stopped it after six exchanges. We started, if this is your possession, I start the game by saying, hey, will you give me $15? Tr just trust me, give me $15. So at first, you lost $15. But then I said, Thank you. Since you were so nice and gave me 15, I'll double the money that you gave me and I'll give you 30. And you're like, well, shoot, this might work again. What if I give him 60? And you try it again. And I'm like, since you were so nice, I'll give you 120. 
And after doing this six times, you've now netted 315. But what if we went a seventh time? Played yourself. No. <laughs> yeah, you would have played yourself. Because if we go a seventh time, you'd owe me... Negative 960. Which makes it negative 640. Yeah. And then so, you that back and then the thing it. about finite, would you say 645? Yeah. The oh. thing about finite geometric series is, a spec well, really, when your ratio is negative, it is very critical where you stop. So if you're using the formula, you got to be real careful that you know the correct number of terms because where you stop is going to make a monumental difference for did we gain or did we lose. Make sense? I know that game doesn't really like, I mean, you would probably play that game if I set up the ground rules and said you can stop at any point you want. Oh, yeah. Shoot, I'll man. Just go play this game. But also, here's the other thing. What if I could stop whenever I want? Oh. Screw that, no, so what if after you give me back 240, I'm like, okay, I'm done. So that'd be the, like... Well, but I imagine if you play a game, when you stop would be determined by the person who said that's in... We're putting too much thought into this, almost. Because that, that would be a bad game to play, right? You're like, it's like when you go to the casino. You know you're probably going to lose money. Unless you play so, the check this out. This is where our formula comes from. So, read, read this situation. It's easier for you to just read it on your own. It used to be grains of rice, depending on which, um, but like, what, what is wheat? I don't know. I don't know if it's called kernels or grains or, like. I've heard, like, bushels. There, so there's different kinds, I think. There's, like, the whole, like, the wheat oh, from, like, or there's just the stuff from the top that is, like, the seed type of Have you never heard of it called a kernel? Yeah, I think of it as a, a grain or whatever you want to. So, so this is an ancient story. This is a real story. Like, well, I don't know if it really happened, but this is a, a, a story that's told very often. So if I put a chessboard in front of you, and I say, all right, I'll, uh, so th this soldier requests, all I want is a grain of rice, or a grain of wheat, whatever, on the first square of this chessboard, and then double the amount on the next square, double the amount on the next square. And the king is thinking, well, shoot, we're starting at one. Can't like whatever, sure, yeah. I'll give you. I'm down. So the king knows, and so does the soldier. There's 64 squares on the chessboard. So um, so he thinks, okay, I'm gonna double 64 times. That's like 120, right? No, nope. not at all. Because you're doubling the previous value. So you're not saying double 64. You're saying at the 64th trial double whatever the number was before, which we don't know till we get there. The amount of rice or wheat or whatever you want to say when it comes to the end of the chessboard is 1.8 times 10 to the 19. <laughs> there are 19 more place values to the right of that decimal. Zone. So if we were to write this value out. Uh, crap, we can't put that. Eight, four, five. How many zeros do I need? Sixteen. Sixteen, right, because we used three of the places. So now I need fifteen more, so now I can go ahead and actually put a comma. So yeah. Oh my. That was me. That was me in the sort word. Um Eighteen quintillion. Eighteen quintillion. This is like unfathomably large. So like, that man just basically got all of the wheat he wanted. Yeah, essentially. Like Wait, literally you, all of it. Could you like fill a spoon with that much wheat? You I it depends on the side. I mean we could Okay. Wait, we're gonna let's order it all on farmers up. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They have seed, wheat grain, wheat genome, wheat seed. Here we go, genome. seed or grain? Grain. 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 Kernel. Just search. So. Kernel. 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 Kernel
They're not going to have individual. So there's 12,427 per pound. So let's say, how many pounds of wheat was this? Well, if we take this value divided by, why are these two different? Two different kinds of wheat? Yeah, what type of wheat do you like? Approximately 15,000 seeds per pound. Let's just do that. And we can do this using the scientific notation. Man, so if you use so that bad. scientific notation divided by 15,000, this is way easier than using your calculator. Wait, how many were in the one pound? Let's just do 15,000. So if I do 1.5, but if it was actually 15,000, oh this would be times 10 to That's the fourth. So it's a little over oh. one, one something here, times 10 to the 15. Yep. Pounds. So, pounds. Yep. Yeah. Like... The school will probably see. There is there is an old sort of library where the architect forgot to account for the weight of the books and the building sunk. Every year it would take a couple more inches and then eventually they had to condemn it. My high school is sliding down the hill they built it on though. Uh -huh. It has a, a crack in the floor on every single the, floor. There's a crack in the floor in the same place. They had to put metal covers over it because the crack got large enough that people were like losing pencils down it and stuff. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. There is an issue with Thomas Wayne. I'm adding the touches that you tied in there. Well, there's. Holy. I mean, it's Thomas. Uh, it's it's Let's be honest. It's really All right. Fun. You want to go on so vacation this summer. No, no, I do. I do. You want to go on vacation this summer. You set aside 100 bucks. For each month thereafter. You would decide to set aside 10% more than the previous month. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Well, I mean, if you start with a manageable amount, like maybe you'd start with a lesser amount to begin with. How much could we save in 12 months? 12, wait, I have a question. 12 months after the 100? Or is the first so the 100 would be month one. Okay. So it would be A sub one. Oh, okay. So this. A sub one. That's pretty good. So if this is only going to happen for 12 months, is it finite or infinite? Finite. finite. So we know that the sum of my 12 months. So what's our ratio here? Michelle? Yeah, do you want to gain 10%? We're multiplying by 1.1. We know that our n is going to be 12. We know that our a sub 1 is 100. So help me set this up. You got your formulas? What goes first? I'm in the numerator. 1 plus 14. I don't know. Flip back to the front. The more you look at it, the better you remember. 100. What? Flip back to the front page. A sub one. Or maybe, yeah, it is in the last one too, where it says write the sum formula. We start with what we start with. So we started with an investment of 100. The only weird part of this is remember that r to the n. So 1 minus the ratio of 1.1 to the power of 12. That's probably the weirdest part to remember. One point one, one, oh. 1. 1 to the twelfth. Right. Because it is the ratio to the amount of yeah. terms. And then the bottom is just one minus r. Now he's surprised, wide-eyed. Ah, uh, that becomes some number that's lame to work with. So do it in your calculator. You got it. Two thousand one hundred thirty-eight dollars and forty-three cents. What? Forty. Wait, what? I not. I have an issue with that because even if you saved two hundred dollars for twelve months, that'd be high. like that seems high. I don't know for sure, but if we only saved a hundred dollars a month, we'd end up with twelve hundred dollars. So I, that may be okay, but it just seems a little high. Really? Because I got something much more. Did you get something smaller or higher than that? Smaller. Same. So yeah. check 
your powers. And this comes out of order of operation here. Calvin will be the student. I know what what you really need to do, this might be okay, it just in my head it seems high, but that might just be me. You need to do your 1.1 to the 12th contained within itself. So I would actually start in this parentheses. I would say 1 minus open a parenthesis, because you don't need one before that. So do 1 minus open your parenthesis, 1.1 to the 12th, and close your parenthesis. Get that value. Then hit times 100. Then, well, we already know the denominator. We can do that in our head. Divide that by a negative 0.1. Yep, you are correct. So that shows you starting with $100 is not that crazy. Adding 10 or 11 or $12 a month isn't that crazy. Like more than you invested last month. And you end up with a lot. So if you're looking at like, you know, potential spring break trips in high school or college or whatever, small amounts add up every month in my one account through Huntington. I love that they let me set this up. You can transfer from one of your accounts to one of your accounts. So every month I have an automatic transfer set up $100 out of my checking into my savings. I just don't even think about it. I wish it would let me do something like this. Where as I make more money, it will automatically increase. Like next year, it would bump up to 120 or something. Like I'll have to go in and change that. But if you manually bump up your investments, you end up with a lot of money. As opposed to if every month he just invested 100, he'd only have 1,200 dollars. He made almost a thousand extra bucks. Yeah. Except by the end, you're putting in over 300. Yeah, but that like if you assume that maybe you're getting more hours as the year goes or something like that. Like, or as it gets oh, closer to summer, you're time. living within your means. Like you don't go out to eat, or you don't like you don't spend your money other ways. Because if I know at the end of the month I want to invest this in the bank, I might manage my money differently. Uh -huh. You know, that's like, why I got a smaller number. I got to put parentheses on one and one. That's one. probably yeah. why I got it also. Uh, so check that. If you got that wrong, try to run that math. Wait, I'm I sure just got wait. I, I redid it, but I got that right. answer, so I probably just break it up. Don't try to plug the whole thing in to do it once. Yeah. All right, so infinite. Infinite. Infinite's actually easier, which is the sad thing about doing this process. Our sum formula for an infinite is just the first term over 1 minus r. That's it. So when we start with 1, and each time we are going half of what we had previously, we'll get approximately 10. And it makes sense when you think about it. Think about a ruler. If you start with an inch, and then add half an inch, then add quarter of an inch, then add eighth of an inch, then add a sixteenth of an inch. And you can do this up to like, my. I have one measuring tape at home that goes all the way down to sixty-fourths. It's got these really tiny little tick marks. But you can see it happening and slowly filling up to the two. But then it gets to a point where you'd have to zoom way in to see it continue to happen. One and then you'd have to zoom way in because that's such a, like, light, I don't even know how to say. Um, yeah, it's such like a microscopic distance, you wouldn't be able to see it with the naked eye. Why did they bother putting the little pencil in the Well, they, up to that point, you do. Like, I've done some woodworking stuff that has precision up to the 30 seconds of inch. 64th is really precise. Like, that's less than the thickness of a saw blade. You can just sand that down. Yeah, pretty much. I did have some math over the break that made me think about you, where it's like, well, can't I just try it and then see if it doesn't work? And, like, yeah. It's like, if you're lucky I don't like have your cell phone number to directly I if you go down the hallway by the band room and see the bench tops, I've made four more bench tops for the May term class or outdoor classroom. So there's 45 degree angles at the corners and it wasn't quite working out. So on one of them I did like 44 degrees and it just didn't like I knew it wouldn't meet up perfectly, but I thought there was something going on with my saw blade. Um, but there were some parts of it that supported my like you have to measure, you have to mark, yeah. And there were some parts of what I was doing that supported you do it, try it, fix it after. Like so it was just funny. Ethan? Are you doing the work in the entry class? I'm not. Miss Smith and I think Mr. Hall are going to do it. Oh. So it will be done, but I've been requested to do well, outdoor classes. You're, classroom, you're so. the only one that knows how to play that one game. Seven Wonders of the World. I'll, I'll I don't have to play Seven Wonders. Do you, one do you have Seven really Wonders? Complicated? I can't remember. We need a popular list of what games kids can bring and what games I need to try. Wait, to Mr. Hudson, what was the one game you brought in that had like four players? Dominion? Mm -hmm. Or no, that wasn't the little box. Yeah, little box. Um, oh. with like the librarian and the. Yeah, it was, and it was like this weird thing. Or actually, it was like, a, was it like, 
So yeah, you're unless you get good, you're probably gonna die. We thought we were playing the easy, but we weren't. Don't yeah, don't try to add on the extras until you beat the easy one. So let's try this using our um. The easy one wants to So what does this actually tell me? We want to get used to our sigma notation. This is telling me. Well, what's the n equals 0 and the x? Like, if we start from left to right and we read this, what are those values here telling me? Yeah? How far, the one on the top, or you can see the one on the right side, okay. but, like, how far it goes to. Oh, yeah, that's infinity. Sorry, not an x. Oh. From my angle. Yeah. So, n0 to infinity. So, what's that telling me, though? It says that n is your, like, 0 is your starting point, and that... And, and that it goes to infinity. Yeah, there is no there is no final term, so it's an infinite sequence. What's the two thirds telling me? Right? Is that your ratio? So think about what if n is zero. Oh, well, if n is zero, that turns into a one. First term. So that's our first term. That's our ratio. So make sure that we know how to pull out the information from the sigma statement. This is our first term, this is our ratio, this is the beginning value of n at your first term, and this is the value of n at your last term, which we cannot grab infinity, we, we cannot see the last term. Can't ever actually reach it. So, is this going to converge or diverge? So who can remind me what it means to converge or diverge? Yeah, like when a series or anything converges or diverges. An infinite series, it, it converges when the values approach a single number. Yeah, and then it diverges when... They just get infinitely larger. Yeah, and there, there's a kind of careful use of the word larger, but yeah, you're right. Like, they continue to get bigger and bigger, and they kind of go without bound. They... Um, yeah, they're going away from zero. So that's where, like, now positive and negative doesn't matter when we say just away from zero. Because if my ratio is negative 5 fourths, is my number, forget about value, like positive and negative, is the number getting bigger or smaller? Bigger. Bigger. But I start with a fraction. So let's see, like, what is the second term or the third term, just to look at how we decide this. So, humor me for a moment. Go ahead and put at n equals zero, or you don't have to put the at. Oh. But at n equals zero, um, our a sub n, the value there, is just two thirds. That's our start value, we know that. So, for n equals two, or sorry, not two, one, we're on term two, but n is one at term two. So then we have two thirds times negative five fourths to the first. So really, we just have two thirds times negative five fourths, which we know is going to be negative. Sorry, this should have been a sub plus. What do you get? Five sixths. Uh, ten twelfths. Yeah. So really, if we square this, this is 25 and 16. So then I get uh, 50 over uh, 30, 48. Yeah? 16 times 3. Is 48? Yeah. Yeah. We could graduate from 16 to 3. Since we're going in order, you can just multiply 5, 5, 6. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. So then what's our third term? Uh, you want the proper fraction. So as we can see here, we're alternating positive-negative, 
but I was at two thirds, then five six. Now I've surpassed one, and this is gonna happen slowly. But if you want to visually see what this is gonna end up looking like, this is what Des Desmos is real. Mm. Let's put on Oh, math doesn't. Uh, and this won't sum it. So if I just tell it y equals v two thirds close open. You have to be careful where you close and open when you're using Desmos. You have to bump over to close the whole thing. And then to the power of. Oh yeah, I can just forget all my latex oh. to the X. Is it not going to give it to me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's X. Prop gets Y. Crap. Huh. Weird. Maybe I broke Desmos. So what we would see here is an alternating, it would like, do not trust the size of my graph because this is, oh, I can't draw what you mean. You know what I bet happened? This is a minus instead of a negative. This sigma is what generates the sum. We don't want the sum, I just want to see what the outputs are. Oh, I need to put it up in a hand. That won't fix it. Nope. Well, if you can get Desmos to cooperate with you, what this would end up looking like Yeah, it's gonna end up looking like that. Now, forget about the scale of the axes, because we start at a positive two-thirds. Then we go to a negative whatever the second number was, then we end up at a positive 1 and like 1 24th or whatever, then a negative, then a positive, and we keep getting slightly bigger than the value before, but we're alternating power. So at some point, this is like our game that we play giving money back and forth, when I look at the sum, well if I sum and I stop here, I'm going to end up with a positive sum if my positive had more than my negatives cancelled out. But if I stop down here, it's going to be negative, because my negatives have more than my positives cancel out. And when it's infinite, it just keeps on going. <gasps> yeah? Would the change be gradual like that? Yeah, I mean, it would be at, it would probably be even smaller than what this looks like. So, at each power that has, like, a half... Because think about 5 fourths, that's 120%. So you're really multiplying by a negative 1.2. Even if you went to 2.5? So it would die. Or yeah, 1.25. Thank you. I got my 4 and my 5 switched around. So I wonder if I can change this to decimal and get that to work. Why are you upset about this? Alright, I don't know why it's mad at me, but it is. So this isn't working right now. So, will that converge or diverge? Yeah. Diverge. diverge. It keeps getting well, further away. Well, so, so yeah. if you had like a power of four and a half, would it make it zero? Power of four and a half. What do you mean? Like of this? The X or the N value. Oh. There is no like half turn. Then maybe that's why you can't grab it. Oh, because it's a, yeah, it has to have integer inputs. It's not continuous. Yeah. That, so those lines in between the points wouldn't actually exist. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Because it kept crossing the zero line. So the issue with Desmos is it's trying to make sense of something that doesn't make sense. We can only input integer values and only positive integer values. So we can only input whole numbers into our power, this n, oh. and that's breaking Desmos. Because if you try to put in 1.2 or 1.3, it just can't figure it out. So, sorry, that's why it won't work. I forgot about that. But if you want to generate individual points, you can have it make a table for you or anything else. Um, 
Forget if Jazz wants to have easy three to get through this. Yeah, if you could get this to give you a table and you input whatever x you want, um, and then you could figure out the y. Wait, didn't we just do that one? Caleb, you didn't do that. Oh, my bad. <laughs> just that you guys came right before spring break. Yeah, that was like a week ago. No, it's okay, Mr. Hodgson. We'll just save it. A whole week. Yeah, I don't even think I have a class worth of candy. Like, I'm not joking. I need to see if there's any Easter right. stuff left. You can just give, like, oh, you could probably get sale Easter you know, candy. Yeah, hoping. Oh, Target. Yeah. You should get a little bit of candy. That was like a song. Yeah. How can we figure out? Thank you so much. How can we figure out what the ratio is here? Somebody not Calvin, please. Oh, I'm not starting. How do you figure out a ratio between two values? If I wanted to know how you got from A to B. I'm going to make this real easy. If I want to figure out how to get from 3 to 9. I was figuring out it's 3 halves, isn't it? But, so just tell me how. How do yeah. I figure that out? Well, you find the difference in the... You, you divide 3 fourths by half. Thank you. I divide the higher term value. Not necessarily the bigger number. Hold on. I take the higher term value divided by a previous. So 3 fourths divided by 1 half. 3 divided by 1. 4 divided by 2. No, okay. Three fourths divided, we'll do a little KCF here. Three fourths times two over one. What's that? Six fourths. Oh, three six over fourths, two. Which equals half. three over two. Check it. Does that get you from second term to third term? Yes. Times three, yes. Times two, yes. Will this converge or diverge? So Megan, when we're thinking about converging or diverging, um, when we think about converging, think about the getting to the door problem. I know there's 20 feet between me and the door. I go half that distance. I go 10 feet. Then I go 5 feet. Then I go 2 and a half feet. That's converging because I'm converging to the location of the door. This is going to diverge. Why? How do we know? Oh, wait. Because the, the ratio is about zero. Ratio, ooh, close. I'm above one, that's what I meant. Ratio is, is greater than one. Yeah, uh, the ratio. Yes, thank you. Because I don't even pay attention to like positive, negative. I'm just looking at like the numerical. So it just has to be higher than 100%. Whether it's positive, negative, doesn't matter. If your second term is bigger, absolute value, than the first, you're going to diverge. If you're getting smaller, you're going to converge. And that's that. With five minutes left for nap time. I knew it, Kayla. I knew it. People told me no. Time to go. I didn't, we hadn't we made it very far, and I didn't want you to do it over spring break because I told you not to worry about it. What? <laughs> that he doesn't have enough. It's fine. You guys don't have to need some. Just Brian and I can have some. Right, Brian? <coughs> just you and me? I would just like the best hat. Yeah. For the challenge show. Uh, How about the middle of the show? Yeah, let's go play in the longer hat. I think we're the least part of the hat. Are you talking about one of everybody? Well, now you're saying it's hard. I'm not sure. Yeah, but you don't have to like that. What's the problem? But I don't know what we're doing. You're enabling like, I don't know. him. I have too many responsibilities right now. You're encouraging his behavior. I don't want no, teachers to be my I'm just getting to back up trying to. I don't really.